Taste of the Unexplainable by Don de Corsell. By now you're starting to see how a lot of my perceptions matched up with a video. But the real goal of remote viewing is not to describe a video, but to perceive and understand the things happening at the target location. Since you only perceive a small number of disconnected perceptions during your session, precise interpretation is a challenge. Your clues can be arranged in so many different ways. What I try to do is put the most important clues into a logical sequence. My general sketch puts most of the pieces together. The many things that follow each other, parade style, turned out to be the snake, and is sort of a general thing. Sunglasses, bright sun, weather, time has come, logically linked together, because they're prerequisites for the filming. It was the fight that went around and around, and the mongoose did the loop-de-loop, -loop, while the snake did the lickety-split. The film crew must have been pleased with each other, as they were shaking each other's hands. They may have tossed a ball attached to a line to scare the snake into their camera positions, and were perhaps surprised when a local mongoose unexpectedly entered their video. They probably arrived and departed by jeep, and probably bounced around getting there. Finally, people watched the show in the United States. Some of what's shown there is speculation because I'm interpreting from a limited data set. What I find fascinating, though, is everything you just saw came from this eight-digit number. Right? All that paperwork was done before I had knowledge of the objective. So how does it work? Let's step through the process carefully. As far as I can tell, my mind took that eight-digit target ID number and from that determined what the written objective was, and then traced backwards and determined geographically where the film was shot and when, then started reporting perceptives from that location in the past to me. This boggles the mind. I'm just trying to understand. For this to be possible, my subconscious must have perception that encompasses all space and time. Right? We've seen a typical remote viewing workup. The paperwork, perceptives, and sketches. Then I fleshed out a more complete picture by imagining myself there, using my other written perceptives to provide focus. We reviewed the session together, along with a video shot at the remote target location, and identified more than a few connections. My entire session might not be 100% accurate, but with practice I've been getting good hits, like those you've seen here. This is not luck. We also got a closer look at how the subconscious communicates, how it uses vague perceptions from unusual points of view that must be filtered through your own life experience. This, in essence, is how remote viewing works. Not all remote viewing sessions are successful, however. Of the 17 practice exercises I've done so far, two were completely off target. In fact, they seem to be describing movies. One was West Side Story and that astronaut movie, The Right Stuff. <laughs> but of the other 15 sessions, I had other good connections and curiously interesting sketches. I had a couple of astounding matches, too. It's so cool. And I have to say, when you see it happen, and you start realizing you're connected to this greater mind... It's sort of a game changer. It's almost like having a mystical experience. To summarize all this in brief, this course and remote viewing is amazing. It's hard not to get excited about remote viewing. It gives you a sense of connection with something greater than yourself. 
I've been told the military determined anyone can do remote viewing. And separately, those who practice meditation, as I do, may achieve better results. So, so there it is. Remote viewing in a nutshell. Thank you very much for watching.